everyone. Dean Chris back in the studio this week doing the podcast slash lesson. We're going to be talking about you and how do you get to where you want to get to. Now, a lot of us are stuck in some kind of gear that we need to get out of. And I'm going to relate this podcast slash lesson to how we are as human beings, much like automobiles. We got to get in the right gear in order to make the right and enough progress in our life. If we're stuck in a gear that is going nowhere, then maybe that's the reason that we're not making any progress. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this episode. As we always say, a straight talk on leadership. Turn up the volume, and get ready to change your life. All right, good? Good, awesome. All right, <clears throat> here we go. All right, Drew. This is the podcast as we will go forward here and me and Kelly's going to have a conversation and we're just going to kind of play off each other and uh, she's going to ask questions and help me stay on track and you know how that, how that goes. Okay. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Dean Chris back in the studio on Straight Talk on Leadership. Glad to be with you this week. We just finished up our series on greatness I hope you enjoyed that one because it really made a difference in my life. When I started looking at greatness and I started looking that greatness is for everyone and I started really challenging myself and started thinking, well, you know what? I can be great. It certainly has changed me and it's given me a direction. It's given me a drive. It's given me a motivation. It's just changed me. It's changed the way I've looked at life. It's changed the way I've looked professionally. It's changed the way I'm in the classroom. And I hope that you enjoyed that podcast as much as I did, Kelly and I did, of doing that podcast. Well, this week, I'm joined in the studio again with becoming, uh, soon becoming, and always becoming, I guess, our partner, Kelly. Kelly, our operations uh, director, she's a business development director as well. She wears many hats at LHLN, and really, she's kind of the little engine that could, that makes this thing run, and uh, <laughs> although I might come up with the idea is she's the one tugging and pulling this sucker up the hill. So Kelly, good to have you back in the studio this week. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. I know. And you can always, you always add good stuff to this and kind of keep me on track and get me to thinking and ask good, great questions and add good comments. So I really do appreciate it. We've had a lot going on at Straight Talk on Leadership and LHLM, which is Leaders Up and Leaders Network. We've had some exciting things going. I want to share a little bit of that news with you before we go to the podcast because this week, I think the podcast is going to be really pretty good. Yes. You know, it's, it's um, you know, Kelly, how my mind works. I, I've got this kind of simple mind that tries to take things that looks a little bit complex and turn them into simple because that's how I understand it. Yes. And what I try to do is to try to pass that on to people, the kind of simple lessons in life. And, and I think podcasts should be designed for that. Podcasts should be those kind of things that motivate us. It should be content that gets us to say hmm you know I never really thought of it like that or let me look at it from that perspective or to give that and so I do know something in life that the more I learn from other people's scars the less they impact me or the less the (laughs) harmful or painful they are on me so I'm going to try to get to folks to learn from my scar tissues and some things I've learned about how to motivate myself and you know how to get the most out of life and this podcast this week is going to be about How do we get the most out of what we're trying to get something out of? If it's profession, if it's leadership, if it's family, relationship, whatever that is, we're going to use that this podcast to try to do that. But we've got some exciting things going on. Our book was released, Essential Leadership Lessons from the Thin Blue Line, on January 27th. It uh, pretty quickly rose to an Amazon bestseller. And what I love about the sale of that book is, it's just like last night, you know, I was sitting around. You know, I got back from Oklahoma. I'd had a chance to teach in Oklahoma this week. Mm -hmm. And I got back and I looked on uh, Messenger and it said, you got a message on Facebook. And I looked and there was a guy, uh, a sergeant in Lynchburg, Virginia, who had uh, had a picture of the book. And he said, hey, I got my copy. Uh, I just want to let you know it helped me on my last promotional. I want to let you know that this new one, the Essential Leadership Lessons, looking forward to it, helping me on the next promotional, my lieutenant's test. And, uh, and just letting you know, I really enjoyed your book. That thing, right, stuff like that's just, 
I mean, you can't duplicate stuff like that. Well, that's what means so much to you is just having that belt, you know, just that you're helping people, you know, that you've made a positive impact. Well, and, and, you know, I I love doing that, but I also love growing with them. So it's kind of like, I enjoy uh, people getting better, but I enjoy me getting better too. And so when I'm trying to constantly help myself get better, I think I can share with some people the journey I'm taking and then they in turn share the journey they're taking. And then, you know, it, it just gets us better. So I, I really, the book has been, um, I guess, more successful than we kind of anticipated. And, and it is because- it is a bestseller. I mean, it is definitely a bestseller and was number one for three, three weeks um, among the new releases, which is just phenomenal. And next week we release the hardcover. So if you've been waiting to purchase the book, it'll be available. It is available right now for pre-order. I've already pre-ordered a copy. And so it'll be coming. Um, they'll release it and ship it from Amazon, I think on the third. Yeah. I need to, I need to order one myself on Amazon so I can help my sales on Amazon. Right. So <laughs> I need to order one. And, and, but, but it's, it's, the book has just been really was, was pretty cool to write, but it also has just been really good in our release. And we got some other things like last week we were notified that our podcast was one of the top 10 law enforcement for law enforcement officers via police one. Yes. They rated us in the top 10 and uh, said that if you want to learn about leadership, go to straight talk on leadership with uh, retired police chief Dean Crisp. That was pretty humbling to, you know, get police one to put that out there. So that, Absolutely. that helped, Absolutely. but you know, the, it, it, I think it's because the content that we, we give on these podcasts, it just comes from the heart, but it comes from experience too, of kind of not trying to be something we're not, you know, we're not John Maxwell and we're not, you know, we're, we're not trying to be John Maxwell. We're, we're, we're trying to be Dean Crisp and Kelly Corvin and leaders helping leaders network and make a major impact in one of the most pro- important professions around the world, which is law enforcement, we do want to expand our reach. But right now, you know, that's where we put in our focus. And I think that's tremendous that we're doing that. And Absolutely. to get named in the top 10 was pretty humbling. So we had a good week. Um, next week, I'll be in uh, Blowing Rock, North Carolina, teaching all week. And then uh, so, but I thank you folks for joining the podcast. And I think you've become like family to us. And we really, really thank you. We couldn't do this without uh, this week, uh, our numbers skyrocketed in podcasts and listens, and that wouldn't be possible in, in le- uh, unless folks like you tuned in. So thank you very much. If you're enjoying our podcast, please hit the subscribe button. It'll notify you when new um, episodes and what we call lessons drop. And those, we try to do those every week on Monday or Tuesday. And so thank you for that. And pass it on to a friend. I encourage you to pass it on to somebody who may benefit. Absolutely. So Kelly, this week we're going to be and enough about all that. So let's talk about the podcast this week. Uh, you know, I've been thinking about this podcast. Uh, what was I going to do today? And, and I'm one of those people that I have to do inspired podcasts. I can't just sit back and, uh, you know, just start writing stuff and say, well, I'm going to see if that'll stick the, against the wall or whatever that is. And you know that better than anybody by helping me through some of the creative process that I go through. Yes, yes. But you know I like to be inspired when I do a podcast. And if I'm inspired, uh, generally the audience gets inspired. So, uh, you know, with that, I'm going to, this week I was inspired to talk about, you know, and you know this, that in in the business and the LHLN Leaders Helping Leaders Networking, straight talk on leadership and our classes that we're doing that we're, we're trying to move forward. And we got some great things that we're going to be offering like the book. Uh, We're going to be offering the book in a one day class where we're actually going to go to locations and provide the book. And then I'm going to go through the three areas in the book that really matter to people, how to lead yourself, how to lead others and how to lead your organization. And I think that's going to be a hit for people because I'm going to talk about my experiences and where those came from and things I can't cover in the book. So I, I think that's going to be a hit. But saying that, we're we're kind of in a situation where we're trying to hit right the right marks. Mm-hmm. And 
And I think that anytime you aim at anything, it's key that you set, you know, you know what the target is and you set the target, but it's very key that you get as close as you can to the target you're trying to hit if you're going to be successful. So with that, I was thinking about, well, you know, anything in life or anything that you're going to do in business, you, you've got to be in the right gear. Now, what this podcast is going to be about, it's going to be the parallel between like the automobile and the transmission and gears versus, you know, humans and human activity and human interrelationships and those type of things of, of being in the right gear, you know, because in a car, everyone out there that's listening to this podcast knows that if you're whatever gear you're in is going to determine the direction of the car. So you can't be in reverse and expect to go forward. Right. You can't be in park and expect to make any progress at all. And so I'm going to parallel this lesson, kind of like the gears of life and the gears of a car. And I want people to think about this for a minute. So I, I want them to think about how a transmission works and really how it works. You know, the engine is what provides the power. So if you looked at the engine, in my mind, if I was going to parallel that to leadership and, and, you know, we always like to make these about leadership and about personal development. As far as I'm concerned, the engine is your mindset. It's like, you know, what, what is my mindset? What, what am I trying to accomplish? Where, what's my attitude? You know, what's my commitment? What's my willingness? What's my maturity level? What, what, you know, your mindset is the engine that drives everything. So it's the power source, you know? And then when you look at fuel, which drives the engine, I think it's like passion, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, when you look at your drive, I think the more passion you have, the more fuel you got. And, you know, I do know in life that when I'm running low, that my passion takes a hit or when my passion is low, I take a hit with fuel. So I really have to find a way to refuel myself or to, recapture that passion and, and what is passion you know a lot of people say well well passion for me is that you literally are so determined and so driven in what you're doing that you do it for free you are making a major impact on what you're doing and you're just loving what you're doing when you find your passion you are you are in your purpose and so i think that's really important now when you look at the transmission and i'm going to come back to that the transmission the engine powers the kind of the wheel, you know, the, the, how that turns the wheels and the transmission provides the gears in which the wheels turn in. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at your transmission, you just don't go from, you know, very low to very high. You've got to intermittently go through gears to reach a higher level. And then the car pulls or the transmission pulls based on the gear that it's in. Right. And the higher the gear, the smoother the operation and the more the automobile is acting or operating efficiently. And so, and I look at the tires, you know, that's kind of the determination. That's the traction. You know, you got to be determined to, ma to make all these. So when you look at these parallels, but I'm going to spend this podcast talking about the gears you're in or the transmission. What's, what's really turning you? What, What's helping you get to that next level? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at transmissions, I mean, does that make sense to you? I mean, really? I'm, I'm, it does. It, it, it draws me in because I'm curious how you're going to make that parallel to um, on the transmissions to human. Okay. Action. And, and that's fair enough. And, you know, you know, me and my brain, and, you know, I just, I mean, I'm thinking about things that, you know, probably are crazy to some other people, but. If you think about transmission, for example, let's let's look at you personally when it comes to kind of the gear or the drive that you're in. Now, one thing that I know about motivation, and I know this because I made it up based on my own motivation. So what I generally do is I look at, at theories of what people are talking about or how people are talking about when I was listening to motivation, then I add my flavor to it. So it makes more sense to me. So, you know, reading Daniel Pink's book drive or 
reading John Maxwell or reading uh, Daniel Goleman or reading, you know, some of those gurus on, you know, how to motivate people and stuff like that. I've got my own thought process on how to motivate people or what motivates me. So I think there's three types of motivation for people. And particularly for me, my motivation is going to determine a great deal of what I get done. Absolutely. So if I'm not motivated or I'm not connecting with what I'm doing and I don't feel like doing it, then I'm generally not going to do it. And, and, you know, I had an opportunity uh, several years ago, maybe three now, to have an opportunity to listen to Nick Saban. And what I love about Nick Saban when I heard him at Alabama or in Birmingham at the FBI Lita conference was, this is what I love about what he says. He says, we make about a hundred decisions a day that have a direct correlation to where we end up in life and the direction we want to go. You know, and I thought about that and I thought, wow, man, that is so freaking true. Yeah. We, we make decisions every day that ultimately make most cases baby steps towards where we're trying to go. And in turn, which really moves us in that direction we want to go to. So when I was listening to him say that, I thought, oh, my God, you know, it, it's so true. And then he said, you make those choices based on two things. You either make a choice because it's in the right direction you want to go and it's what you should be doing, or you make a choice based on how you feel. And he said, most people make decisions and choices on how they feel. And I had to, I had to really just shake my head and say, oh my God, you're so right. Yeah. Because no, a lot right. of us, if, if we don't feel like doing something, we just don't do it. No, that's right. And so. So what, what Saban talked about, it, it began me to think about motivation and it be, began me to, it just began a thought in my mind about what really truly motivates me. And I think there's three, there's three motivational levels, if you will. The first one is you kind of want to do something. Mm -hmm. So when you kind of want to do something, you have a tendency to not really ever do it because it's just a thought. It's just uh something you're thinking about doing and you just kind of want to do it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's like me, I, I kind of want to take a cruise one of these years, <laughs> but I'm not really driven to take a cruise. You know, I, right, I don't really right. care if I take a cruise or not, which means by all likelihood, I'm not sure I'll ever make it because all I ever want to do is kind of want to do it. Right. You know, so it, it's kind of like that. Then the second type of motivation is what you're determined to do. Now, when you get determined to do something, you, you're probably about 50% of the time going to get it done. And that's a level of motivation for me is I, I tend to stay determined in areas of my life that matter, but the ones that really matter, I step it up to another level. Right. So, so I'll give you an example of like, my physical fitness or taking care of my body or taking care of myself or improving me by myself by reading or listening to other leaders and the, you know, the, the subject matter of, of leadership, I've got a different level instead of just being determined to do that. Because if that was the case, I'd only do it when I felt like it. So being determined, you generally just only do it when you really kind of feel like doing it. Now, the third kind is called driven. And that's what you're driven to do. And I do know this, that in any area of my life where I'm driven, I generally get it done. Mm -hmm. And so on physical fitness, I'm driven on leadership development. I'm driven on contacting people, hoping they're doing good and, you know, checking in with people and seeing what's going on and starting programs and teaching. I'm driven. And, and those areas of my life, you can see that impact. And so when you look at the transmission You've got to have a motivating factor. So here's what happens to us. And, and, and I want them, I want you folks in podcasts that are listening to podcasts to this lesson. I want you to think about those areas of motivation, but I want you to think about these gears that we're stuck in in life. Okay. So I want you to think about a significant area of your life. And I want you to think about like relationships with your spouse 
partner, whoever it might be, relationships with your children. I want you to think about professional development at work. I want you to think about promotional opportunities, things that are big things in your life, your big rocks, you know, the things that are big rocks in your life. And I want you to, I want you to really look at these gears when I talk about, because I want you to compare the gear versus what you want to get done with that. Okay. So let's think about this for a minute. So let's talk about the gear. The first gear that most cars stay in the longest is park. That's true. Yeah. And so they stay, you know, when, when you stay in park, you know, you, you have a tendency you're setting still. Uh, now park is not all bad because it gives you a resting period. Like you can't run the car 24 hours a day, right. you know, but you can't sit in park and expect major results. Right. So a lot of people in their life are in park in this area where they want to really gain something. And no matter what you're trying to accomplish, you got to be in the right gear to get it. And there are variations of these gears you go to, but you've got to spend the time in the gear that makes the most progress, not the one that doesn't. So if you want to say like, for example, education, if I wanted to get a degree and I wanted to increase and improve my professional development as it related to education, well, if I just stayed in park and I never went to school and I never got an education, I never called the people at the college, I never sent my transcripts. I never did. If I stayed in park, well, you can't expect a year later to have a degree. No, that's right. So, you, you know, and sitting in park here, here's the interesting thing. When you sit in park, you're waiting on somebody else to do something. So a lot of people are waiting for someone else to do something before they get something done. Now, if you do that, you're done. You ain't going to get out of park. You're going to stay in park. because well, you're, just, you're being reactive. You're basically waiting on other people to motivate you. Well, you're, what yourself. you're letting other people do is determine your fate, determine your direction, determine mm -hmm. your movement. Like, um, you, you know, some people say, well, I'm going to wait till I get promoted to this rank before I do this. Well, see, that's in park. Right. I'm going to wait till my boss gets better or my boss gets back. I'm going to wait till the budget gets better. I'm going to wait till this gets better or that gets better. See, that's a fixed mindset. People who tend to be in park a lot have a very fixed mindset when it comes to growth. True. They, they just don't see it. And in park, you're getting nowhere fast. And so, what I'm asking you is I want you to take the area of your life, let's say relationship. And you, you know, you've been married for years or you've got a relationship where you want it to improve, or you got kids that you want to get better at. And you've got, you know, they're young. They're not, they're not who they should be. They're not doing things you want them to do. But then when you get home, you're in park, right? You don't do anything. You don't, put the right gear in motion to make things happen. Now, being in park, like I said, is not all bad, but when you're in park, when it comes to a transmission, you're stuck. You're not going anywhere. The, the movement of the car is the, or the movement of, now think about this for a minute now. When you're in park, your movement is gonna be determined by other people. That's a killer. I mean, that's for sure. Now let's talk right. about reverse. Mm -hmm. So we got the gears in the car reverse. We're going backwards. Exactly. Now, sometimes we need to go backwards to go forward. But when you go backwards, the gears are very limited. In other words, it, the car is the transmission is geared so low that it only lets you go so fast. Why? Think about this now because going backwards very long is dangerous. You see another view, you, you get caught up and that you're traveling backwards. You can't really control things because they're in the past. You can't really, you know, 
You can't move forward because you're looking in the rearview mirror. You're, you're just living in the past when you're in reverse. Now, sometimes we're going to be in reverse. There's going to be things that happen to us in our lives that puts us in reverse. But reverse is only, listen to me now, reverse is only meant to be momentarily in reverse. Like a it's, three point turn. It's not meant for any long travel, but there's yeah. a bunch of people stuck in freaking reverse that's running their life in reverse. Well, and don't you think that that's the product of like bad habits? They just get stuck having that same rerun like, oh, you know, it's because I'm this or it's because I can't do that or I don't have the money to go back to college or whatever. It becomes excuses and just bad habits, which goes back to the what you said initially, which is mindset. Where's well, your- I mean, certainly habits is one thing that puts us in reverse, but I think disappointment puts us in reverse. I oh, think sure. more times than not. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think that uh, when we don't get what we want, sometimes as fast as we want it, it puts us in reverse. Our own timetable can put us in reverse. Our, our, I mean, there's a lot of psychological reasons why we go in reverse, but I do know that you don't want to spend a lot of time in reverse. It's dangerous. It's not productive. And you will never get to where you're trying to get to driving in reverse. That's why they don't race in reverse. You know, they race moving forward. That's why we don't, you know, we don't travel in reverse because just it's a natural thing not to go in reverse. Right. I said, I mean, I think I mentioned the three point turn. I mean, really, you should only be using reverse to take a quick reflective look that's going to help you go forward you know, to, to adjust and make and say, okay, what, what is that self-reflection I need to have in that moment that reverse is giving me saying, okay, what did I do that I could have done better in that situation and how for corrective action to go forward? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, reverse is designed for short term, but short term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you really, but a lot of people are stuck in reverse and they think that's okay. Now, the next gear is neutral. Now, what's that designed for? Well, that's designed for waiting either to go forwards or backwards. When you're in neutral, you tend to be at the whim of the topography or the geography. If you're on a hill, you'll roll backwards. If you're on a hill, you might roll forwards. But you don't determine your motion when you're in neutral. So a lot of us, had give our lives over to others and we get stuck in neutral because they're controlling our lives. The only thing you can do, the only real thing you can do in neutral in terms of moving in any direction is to coast. Now, when you coast, you're not in control. So a lot of times we're coasting through life, but we're wanting the forward advancement, but we're stuck in neutral. You can't get power to the engine. You can't get any increased speed or traction. You you can't really make up any miles. You're just coasting. So when you tend to be in neutral, you're on a very long way, a road to nowhere. So neutral is one of those things that a lot of people go to as a time to just Status quo, it status quo is neutral. If you're not growing and you're not learning and you're not trying to be better, you're stuck in neutral. And I guarantee you right now, when you get stuck in neutral, you will be the most miserable you will ever be in your life. Because the problem is, is that you can still move, but not fast. Right. You can still go somewhere, but at somebody else's pace or the organization's pace or the boss's pace. And and what happens when you're in neutral is it's one of the most it's one of the most demotivating times in our life 
because we've put the car in some gear, we just don't know where to, where to go. And that is really a butt kicker. You right. Know, to be in neutral. I, I'd rather be in reverse. I'd rather be in park. Or I'd definitely rather be in drive because if, I, if I'm in those gears, I know where I'm going. I'm either going backwards, I ain't going nowhere, or I'm moving forward. If I'm in neutral, I don't know which way I'm going. Right. And when you get into the neutral gear of life, you literally have no direction. And the direction is always provided by somebody else. And so that area of life is important, but it's also dangerous. Because when you get stuck in neutral, sometimes you get you can get more comfortable. And, uh, but remember you're moving, just not in the direction you want to go. And that's, that's pretty crazy. Right. So let's talk about drive. Being in drive is the only way we move forward fast. But I do want people to realize that in drive, you have several gears. Mm -hmm. You've got first gear, you've got second gear, you've got third gear. You know, and every one of these gears is designed to keep you in control as you move to the next speed. Right. So you have to look that when you look at those gears, every single one of those gears has a purpose. So when you're in first gear, the wheels are turning slow because you're just starting off. Now, you and I talk about this a lot because I, I think what happens is we get these great ideas, you know, and we try to go to the highest gear right away where we should be in first gear. You know, we should be turning a little slower because we have a tendency when you're in a slow gear, you're in more control. The most control you will ever have in a car or yourself is in first gear. But it's not the gear you will make the most progress in, but it's the gear that you have the most control in. You right. can stop when you want to. You can put on the brakes. You can put it in park really quickly. You can get out of the car. Even in first gear, you can get out of the car. But you can't, you can't get out of the car in fifth or tenth gear. You know what I'm saying? You just can't get out of the car because you get killed. And you look at second gear. Second gear is designed to help first gear and things start gaining momentum. Now, why, why does the transmission, it really takes the concept of the flywheel. When you get forward motion going in one direction, it gets smoother and gets better refined and everything starts operating a better gear. When the higher gear, everything's more in sync. So, when, when you look at that, then you got, you know, third gear, you're starting to level out. You're starting to pick up speed. You're starting to gain confidence. You're starting to gain. It, it's just like you would not take, you know, and, and I know you've taught both your girls to drive like I taught both my boys to drive. But how long was it before you took them on the interstate? You're muted. Kelly, you muted yourself, and I'm not sure how. Or why? I said, I said uh, it was a while. Obviously, um, they basically um, the biggest nerve wracking thing was driving, letting them drive to school every day because there's so many stops and starts, you know, in the traffic that we have here in front of our house on the way. But they had the most control in those gears. Absolutely. The reason you didn't put them, yeah, that, that that that's right. You didn't put them on the interstate in high gear because right. if you make a mistake at high gear, you can blow the wheels off. Exactly. And so that's why when you get to a high speed, you've got to have your stuff in order. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So when, when, when you're, when you're moving at that rate of speed, you have got to be confident. No, that's you, right. You, you've got to. So the gears in life are based upon your confidence level. It's the speed you want to go. It's your experience level. It's the things you want to do. And the higher the gear, obviously the faster the speed, the more you're smoothing things out. So, and then if you got four gears, you're moving towards. And if you got a fifth, five gears in a car, you know five is where you're cruising. You're cruising, yeah. And that's where you put it on cruise. And you're hopefully so that's when you're most capacity. Yeah, and, and you're taking it, you know. So 
you know, what I'm trying to tell people and what I'm, what I'm trying to get out of this podcast is, is that if you're going to operate in life, you got to determine what gear you're in. So I want people to really take a hard look at the areas in their life that are the most important. And then I want people to really think about what they want in those areas. And then I want them to take the gears that we've talked about and put the parallel to saying, if I really want to make this progress, what gear am I in? Yeah. And it's, and it's almost like the higher the gear, the more it takes, but the more progress you make. And so go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that I also think that you can't always run in fifth gear, just like you would not run a car the entire way in fifth gear. You need to be able to adjust and know when you need to be in fourth gear versus fifth gear, when you need to reevaluate. And maybe there is an appropriate time where you're just gaining the momentum, getting kind of your feet under you like one of the middle gears would do before you push it straight forward. So it's kind of a balancing act between those gears, just like it would be in a car. Yeah. And it's the same thing about passing people in life. When you pass people on the road, you're probably in a different gear. Yes. And, and you have to realize they're in that gear for a reason. Yes. And it may be, you know, just where they want to be. It may be, they're not as confident as you are. It may be, they're not as driven as you are. So when you're in a leadership position, you, you have to be aware of what gear people are in also. And you have to be aware of what gear they're in. If you want to start a project out, you can't have, you know, half your staff in park or in neutral and then half your staff in fifth gear Mm -hmm. because it's going to create a great deal of disconnection, but it's going to create a great deal of disharmony and no synergy. And so- I was just going to, if, if I, I don't want to interrupt you, but one thing that you mentioned when you were talking earlier was about the motivations, those three, and this kind of applies to this, because I think as a leader, it's, it's incumbent upon you to not only understand this about yourself, but also about the people around you. Are they doing it just because they're determined to get it done due to an extrinsic motivation? When you were talking about determination, I was thinking, okay, if you kind of want to do it, it's really undefined. You're not really motivated to do it extrinsically or intrinsically. You know, now you might get motivated to do it if your spouse says, hey, let's go on that cruise. You know, I want to go on that cruise. And so then you're like, okay, that's an extrinsic motivation. So you get more determined to do it. But that drive is really that intrinsic motivation. And to me, that's where once you are in a driven state of mind on any endeavor you have or undertake, that's where you get, that's where you shift gears and it goes from third gear to fourth to fifth, wouldn't you say, or you you come out of cruise control. And so you kind of need to gauge where people are. Are they just doing it because you're telling them to do it? Or are they doing it because, and and there's going to be times where that's all you need to do. You you know, it has to be done whether they want to do it intrinsically or not, but getting people to where there's a balance there of things that they're doing that are motivating them internally, as well as what they have to do because it's part of their job. It's an extrinsic motivation. Well, let me, let me put it to you like this on any journey we take, any journey we take, we use all those gears. Sure. There is not one gear that we just use those gears have a purpose as, as you know, we talked about earlier in the podcast and you have to use those gears related to the purpose. So if I need to be in park, then I need to be in park. If I need to be in reverse and need to go back and look at something that happened that I don't need to let happen again, right. Then I need to be in reverse a little bit, not long, but just enough to understand what's going on. Now, if I'm only being neutral, that means I'm just kind of waiting on things to change. I'm waiting. It's kind of like, you know, we talked about him, haw, sniff and scurry and in the, um, who moved my my cheese. Yeah. Who moved my cheese. And, and you look at, uh, hall, you know, just not doing anything. Uh, and he's stuck in neutral. Right. You know, and matter of fact, he's going backwards. And then, then you got the two little rats sniff and scurry, man, they're in drive overdrive, you know, and you look at those parallels of we, we all have these gears 
But I guess the point that would be really important to people that is important to me is, is that you got to get on the same gear with people. If you're trying to make progress, you have to respect all those gears for people because they're going to have them every day. Right. But what gear are we operating the most efficiently at? So what I'm saying is that you as a leader have to determine how do we get all in the same gear? So, I, you know, just in terms of, you know, I can think of a couple of things like, you know, understanding the why, you know, having the passion, having the drive, understanding deadlines, understanding that, you know, we do have to get this done within a certain amount of time, puts people in a certain drive mode. Yeah. And, and what happens is, is most bosses don't really, they don't see what gear their people are in. They just assume they're in this high gear all the time, or they assume that when they're supposed to be working there in this high gear, where in reality, they're in a lower gear. And, you know, we could spend a whole nother podcast on talking about effort and commitment. And, and oh, when, no people, question about it. when people, well, when people work from home, they're in a different gear than they are when they're in an office setting. Sure. So people have to realize that, you know, and people have to realize that just because you're in drive doesn't mean everybody around you is. And so bosses need to realize what gear you're in. What gear do we at the office operate most efficiently in? Uh, I would be willing to bet it's not park neutral or reverse. It's in some form of drive. And so how do you get that? How do you get people to those levels? And those are just some of the things that sure. I thought about, but you will, you will absolutely drive yourself less crazy if you understand the gear that people are in and then what motivates them to get to the same gear you're in may not be the same motivations. And I always say this about leaders, you know, managers treat everybody the same. Leaders treat everybody differently according to what the needs are. Right. Sometimes when people in park, they need more. Sometimes when they're in reverse, they need something else. Sometimes they're in neutral. They got to have a little kick in the tail. Sometimes when they drive, sometimes they got to slow down. Right. So you as a leader has to really, you have to understand, you know, what gear your people in and then what level are we most proficient in and let's get us all on the same page and get to the right gear. Absolutely. So there you go. There's our podcast for this week. We talked about the gears of life and I hope that's really helped you. Kelly, again, thank you for joining us on the podcast as always your add value. And that's the one thing that we try to do at LHLN is add value to every, everybody's life. We ask that if you do like, the podcast that you share it with someone you also hit the subscribe button and we really really thank you for joining in and driving our numbers up and listening because honestly you might find smarter people on podcasts you might find people that are going to know more and have more experience but you're never going to find people that are going to care as much about you as we do we care at lhln your own personal development and ours too and we can't do this without you so with that folks until next time I'm Dean Crest.